Hello, and welcome to this episode of Behind the Myth. Today, we are going to be talking about Kelpies. You may have heard of the Kelpies if you live or have visited the town of Falkirk, Scotland, and know them to be 30 meter high horse head sculptures, open to the public in 2014. But the Kelpies, historically, are shape-shifting beasts from Scottish mythology. The Kelpie, or Water Kelpie, is a shape-shifting water spirit that are said to inhabit the locks and pools of Scotland. The name is believed to be derived from the Gaelic words Kelpie and Kolpach, meaning heifer or colt. It is believed that the earliest mentioning of the Kelpies, in recorded history at least, are incised on what is known as the Pictish stones, dating back as far as the 6th century. The Pictish stones, a type of stone or wood-made monuments located north of the Clydeforth lines and on the eastern side of Scotland, are the remaining evidence of the Picts who were a group of Celtic-speaking people during the late British Iron Age and early medieval period. Though the Kelpies are of Celtic origin, analogues of a similar legend exist in other cultures. Parallels of the myth can be found in Germanic Nick or Nixie mythology. Not solely exclusive to German tales, the Neck or Nixie is found in the Netherlands, Norway, Finland and Sweden, to name a few. They are considered to be water spirits with malevolent intentions who can morph into other beings to suit the intended target, like the Greek myths of mermaids and sirens, who ultimately lead men at sea to their deaths while appearing to be beautiful and harmless. Described as a black horse-like creature, Kelpies are also able to adopt a human form in order to lure a victim closer to the body of water in order to drown or maim them in some way. Also sometimes referred to as water horses, the Kelpie can appear as a young male or female, perhaps to draw in the intended prey using their attractive attributions. Traditionally, however, Kelpies in their human form appear as male. One of a few stories which depict the creature as female is set at Conan House in Ross and Coromati, a region of the West Highlands. It tells of a tall woman dressed in green, with a meagre continence ever distorted by a malignant scowl. She is said to have overpowered and drowned a man and boy after she jumped out of a stream. To capture a Kelpie in its equine form, it is said that a halter with a sign of the cross is required, and its strength can then be harnessed to be used by the wielder. One folktale describes how the Laird of Morphy captured a Kelpie in order to use her to carry stones to build his castle. Once the work was completed, the laird released the Kelpie, who was evidently unhappy about its treatment and leaving a curse in her wake. Sayer back and sayer bains, driving the laird o' Murphy stains. The laird o' Murphy'll never strive as long's the Kelpie is alive. Popularly believed to be the downfall of the laird's family and immortalised in a short rhyme, some Kelpies are said to be saddled and bridled, appearing to be an open invite to all who come across it. If a person was able to take the saddle or bridle for themselves, it is said to have magical properties such as the ability to transform another human into a horse or pony. The mythical beings are often said to have a strong presence or aura to them that make it difficult to refuse approaching them. The mythological Kelpie is usually described as a powerful and beautiful black horse inhabiting the deep pools of rivers and streams of Scotland, preying on any human it encounters. 
One of the water kelpie's common identifying characteristics is that its hooves are reversed as compared to those of a normal horse, a trait also shared by the Nikur of Iceland. An Aberdeenshire variation portrays the kelpie as a horse with a mane of serpents, whereas the resident equine spirit of the River Spey was white and could entice victims onto its back by singing. Some accounts claim that the Kelpie retains their hooves, even when appearing as human, leading to its association with the Christian idea of Satan. Robert Burns, the famous poet, bard and beloved Scottish hero, wrote about the Kelpie in his 1786 poem, Addressed to the Devil. Whilst it is believed that the poem itself holds a sceptical of the devil tone, there is undoubtedly distinguishable references to the mythical Kelpie. When those dissolve the snorry horde and float the jingling icy board, then water Kelpies haunt the ford by your direction and knighted travellers are alert to their destruction. Douglas Harper, historian and founder of the Online Etymology Dictionary, defines Kelpie as the lowland name of a demon in the shape of a horse. It is the most common water spirit in Scottish folklore, but the name is attributed to several different forms in narratives recorded throughout the country. Commentators have disagreed over the Kelpie's aquatic habitat. Folklorists have defined the Kelpies as spirits living beside rivers and not as demons who dwell under the surface waiting to snatch a child or strolling maiden. However, even the source of the water has been argued for. Sir Walter Scott, a Scottish historical novelist, poet, playwright and historian, for instance, claims that their territory may extend to locks not only places with flowing water. The creature's nature was described by folklorist Walter Gregory as useful, hurtful, or seeking human companionship. It is alleged that Kelpies take their victims into the water, devour them, then throw their remains onto the water's edge. In its equine form, the Kelpie is able to extend the length of its back in order to carry more riders off into the depths, a common theme in the tales told about the creature. One of the most well-known of these stories details a young boy who attempts to pet the Kelpie. Upon doing so, his hand sticks to the being by assumed magical means. Not wishing to be dragged off to certain death, the lad is forced to cut off his fingers and in some variations of the story, his whole hand. On a sideline, progeny resulting from a mating between a Kelpie and a normal horse created an offspring that was supposedly impossible to drown. They could apparently be recognised by their shorter ears, a characteristic shared by the mythical man-eating water bull, Yek Yushke, another Scottish Gaelic legend. In order to kill a Kelpie, Silver bullets would need to be shot into the creature, as with cinematic werewolves, after which it will appear as nothing more than a soft, jellified mass, though how easy this would be to do is hard to pinpoint. The Magic Arts in Celtic Britain, published by Spence in 1945 and again in 1999, tells of a blacksmith's family who were repeatedly frightened by the presence of a cowpie near their summer cottage. The blacksmith eventually rid of the creature by penetrating the spirit's flanks with two sharp iron spears that had been heated in a fire. The origins of the mystical cowpie may have roots within the horse sacrifices performed in ancient Scandinavia Many Indo-European religious branches show evidence of horse sacrifice, but none extending from explicit myths of Indo-European cultures, aside from the funerary context in which the death of a king would also result in the death and burial of his horse. 
The Kelpie for me represents a cautionary tale as suspected by many to keep children away from the dangers of water as well as a warning to adolescent women to be wary of attractive young strangers. What you see isn't necessarily what you are going to be getting. The myths of the beautiful Kelpies are fascinating and what I like to believe is that every legend lies somewhere between the truth and the mystical. Thank you for joining me today and I hope you'll stop by again soon. If you like the video, please hit the like button so I'll have something to remember you by. Stay safe and have a good one.